Hey guys, I've had some requests to do a tutorial that's a little bit more focused on just getting started in Nomad and goes a little bit more step by step rather than the overview time lapse videos I've done in the past. So today we're going to do just that. We're going to take things a little slower paced. Uh, the video will still be sped up maybe about twice as fast and we'll take a closer look at the exact steps required to create a sculpt like you see here. So we start with the default sphere and I push and pull the forms around with the move tool over there on the right, you see. You can see I have symmetry enabled by clicking on the triangles at the top right. And I'll switch to the brush tool and build up our forms. I can very quickly switch back and forth to the smooth tool by simply using the menu on the left where it says smooth. And I can smooth out any sort of lumpiness that comes from using the brush tool. Here you can see in the settings of any of your brush tools, you can change the fall off. It's a fall off curve. It allows you to get more sharper strokes. And you can see right above the smooth tool on the left, you can also hit subtract. And if I hit subtract and give it a very sharp fall off, you can see I can very easily work in the creases of the folds of where the mouth flaps are. All right, one common workflow in Nomad is as you build up detail, you constantly remesh your model. That's found over in the geometry tab, which is up to the top left. It looks like a grid. You can choose your remesh resolution and hit remesh. It may seem a little bit confusing, but if you'll just try it a little bit off and on, uh, you'll probably get the hang of it. So here I am, I changed the resolution, I hit remesh. You slowly, you gradually increase your resolution as you work in order to give you more and more finer uh, control and adjustment of your forms. So most of the shapes you see here are just using the move tool and the brush tool, as well as the sharper brush, which again just has a sharper fall off of the brush tool. I'm pushing and pulling things, trying to get a more interesting shape and I'm also constantly turning around my model so I can get a good idea for how the forms are looking in 3D space. It's a bad idea to just stay on one, the same view and continue sculpting in the same view uh, without turning things around because you never know how things are gonna look uh, if, you do, if you don't constantly turn your model around. So I'm continuing just to reassess my forms and work on them with the smooth tool and the brush tool. Next, I'm gonna add some spheres. So I go to the little hierarchy menu at the top left. It's that one that looks like a family tree. Click on that and I choose sphere and I move and scale the sphere where I want and make sure mirror is turned on. And once you get it to a good place, you can hit validate. You can change the color of your meshes by hitting the paint brush tool in the top right and then choosing color you want and hit paint all. Next, I'm going to go to the mask tool on the far right, and I'm going to mask out where the pupils are. Once I've got that, I can go into mask settings and hit invert. And then I can switch to the transform gizmo and pull the pupils back into the eyeballs. Anytime I do these sorts of masking and transforming, I end up with kind of a rough mesh. So I do a voxel remesh, and then I'll switch to my smooth tool and go around it and clean it up. Uh, and sometimes I'll even switch to the crease tool to kind of help pinch and sharpen up those edges. Uh, here I am constantly just adjusting the model with the move tool. And you know, it's worth trying out the flatten tool if you can't get things smooth quite the way you need. Uh, the flatten tool does a little bit more polish and it kind of smooths a little bit differently. Here, I'm gonna make some eyelids for our character. I do that by adding a sphere. I move it up and out of the way and switch to the trim tool. I use the line tool on the trim tool to cut it off halfway. And then I move, scale, rotate it, and put it into place as best as I can. So this is just using the transform gizmo to get it into place. Once I get it into place, I then will duplicate it and I'll move it down, rotate it around to get the bottom lid. And after I get everything tweaked just the way I want it with the 
transform gizmo, I'll end up mirroring it. And I can do that by simply duplicating the layer and then going to our symmetry tab and hearing, hitting mirror right to left. And from there, I need to move it into place. Uh, there's, there's probably a better way to do this where it will mirror across the, the main center axis, but uh, didn't really have that figured out. So this was easy enough to just duplicate, flip it and move it into place. Here I'm adding just a little bit more volume and shape to the, the snout, just trying to get that a little bit better. Again, I'm just using the main brush to kind of work that in. I'm also amping up the folds around the eyelids and the forehead just with the main brush and smoothing it back out as needed. Next up, I'm gonna add the ears. I'm gonna do this with a simple cone. We'll create one turn mirroring on before we validate it at the top. Slide it around, just put it into place. Uh, my mirroring, something seems to be a little goofy with my mirroring, so uh, I was having a little a bit of issues as I was rotating it, but anyways, I got it to a good place. Hit validate, I remeshed it so I can easily then go in and start smoothing and reshaping the ears. And again, my symmetry wasn't working because it because my mirroring was a little off, so I had to hit the symmetry button, tell it to force symmetry. If you ever have that problem, uh, that can fix it for you. So after you remesh, just, you know, same process as we've done before, just rinse, repeat. We just then keep shaping things and remeshing things, shaping things, remeshing things until we get things to a pretty good level of detail and form. So I'm pretty happy with those. I'm gonna add a cylinder in. Move that and we'll create a neck here. We'll get it into a good position and size and validate it. Then remesh it and shape it some more. So as you see, what I like to do is anytime I get a main shape in, I remesh, switch to the move tool, push and pull it around. And then as needed, I'll switch to the brush tool and the smooth tool and refine the forms a little bit more. Most of this here is just the move tool in action. Here I'm using the trim tool to kind of cut off the funkiness around the neck so I can get a little bit smoother shape where it cuts off. I'm eventually gonna cover up the bottom of the neck with a collar, just a simple cylinder with a hole in it. But for now I'm going back in with the brush tool and just creating some more interesting folds and wrinkles. Hairless cats are really funny wrinkly fellows. And so the more places I can find to fit in some wrinkles, the better. And again, I just do that with a regular brush tool and even the sharp brush tool to kind of, uh, to cut in the creases there. Crease tool works just as well sometimes. They have a bit, little bit different effects, so you just need to play with them both and see what you like. Here I'm gonna take a, a quick break and start recoloring each object. So. I actually hit the lighting tool and I go into PBR mode and that allows me to then set not just the color of each object using the, the paint brush tool in the top right, but also the roughness and metallic properties of each object. So I'll just go in piece by piece, set the color, set the metallic roughness, hit paint all. And with the pupils, it's the one part where I don't have it separated as a different object. So there I actually switch to the paint tool on the right, set it to a black color and go in and paint that in. Uh, now it's also a good time to just have a little bit of fun with the post-processing settings, turning up the ambient occlusion, just to kind of cut in uh, some of the deeper uh, areas of shadow on the character. I will end up wanting to repaint the nose as well. And here I'm doing that, again, switching to the paint tool, getting the color where I want it, and then painting it in. Switching to a darker color for the inside of the nostrils and kind of in the creases, and working that in. My paint intensity was a little bit too high, so I just dropped that so I can work the, the color in a little bit softer. Once I get that in, I like to then set up a three-point lighting scenario. You can do that in your lighting tab. 
tell it to add a light, and then click on the little color swatch on the light to set the properties, such as whether it's a point light or spotlight, and the cone angle and those things. Uh, for three-point lighting, I usually just stick to spotlights. I have a key light that's usually warm and a fill light that's usually cool. So here I have the key light on the right and the fill light on the left. And I work those in and then I'll usually finish it off with a back or a rim light that has the intensity cranked really hot on it so you get a really nice hot highlight uh, around the edge of the character. So here I am adding in the back rim light. And again, anytime you work in 3D, you always want to be turning your model around to make sure it, things are lining up from all angles and you're placing them just in the right spot. So I'm happy with that three-point lighting setup for now. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna try a couple things with the neck. Just see how it might look like a little bit longer. Um, you know, I messed around with this for a little bit and I think I kind of decided against it and ended up shortening the neck back up. Uh, sometimes it's just kind of fun to play with those things. You know, if you get an idea, you just mask it off, soften the mask, switch the move tool, try it out. And if you don't like it, either undo or just push it back. All right, so with that's about 30 minutes worth of work and uh, condensed down and this is the result I've got. I'm just playing around in that half hour. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you just with maybe another little 30 minutes uh, worth of refinement, some other results you can kind of get out of this. So here you see it, I've added a collar and a little, uh, little tag by the collar. I used the tube tool to create some um, whiskers. So anyways, if you like what you see, just like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if there's anything else you'd like me to give some more detailed, clear tips and tricks on, just let me know. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see me sculpt, let me know. I'll see you guys next time.